Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Now I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while just because I've had so many questions and so many comments on the other video that I did on this when I first bought the item in question. And that item is the Harbor Freight Motorcycle Hitch Hauler or Hitch Carrier, however you want to say it. Um, I did a video right when I picked it up. It was actually um, on my way back from picking up the Supermoto that I'm actually going to use today to kind of give you a whole in-depth installation of this and I'm also going to take you for a drive um, with the GoPro filming it just so you can kind of see the movement that you are going to get with this so roll the intro and let's begin all right guys now this is the hitch hauler completely put together it comes pretty much exactly like this with a little bit of assembly required but not very much the good feature of this is it does come with this right here and this is the stabilizing bracket that actually bolts to the hitch on your vehicle to really stabilize it. Now you will get a little bit of up and down play but you do not get much side to side play at all. One of the big things that I did do if you look down on the smaller ramp part of it I actually put a little bit of skateboard grip tape on it just so when it is wet the bike tires actually have something to grip to when it does pull up on it. So a couple questions that I did get is how much does this thing weigh? This weighs, when I weighed it, 52 pounds, um, pretty much the way it sits right here. And that's actually pretty light for uh, as big as this thing really is. I have hauled my Supermoto about five and a half hours um, on this with no problems whatsoever. Um, there are a couple downfalls to it that I will get to in a little bit, but for about $100, because the 20% off coupon that you get literally every month at Harbor Freight, does apply to this I think it's hundred and twenty seven dollars so minus the twenty percent you know you're going to be in a hundred hundred and ten bucks uh, plus tax so let me go ahead and install this I'll walk you guys through it exactly what tools you'll need and we'll get the bike up on it and take a little drive afterwards all right so this does pretty much install into any standard two inch hitch and just like any other kind of hitch literally just slide it right in um, it only has one mounting point as far as for the lock pin to go through. So once you get it lined up, you obviously, and I did buy the bigger pin, just slide it right through and secure it with the cotter pin. Now, as far as the actual stabilization bracket, these go exactly like this, so it makes a perfect square with the hitch. This right here is an 18 millimeter, and for the nut over here, I just use a pair of standard channel locks. So I will go ahead, get it a little bit tight, align the brackets, and then tighten it completely down. So like I said, 18 millimeter on this side, standard channel locks here, and this should form pretty much a complete square, which eliminates almost all side to side movement. You will still get a little bit of up and down, but not very much at all. So the ramp is held on by this big turn wheel bracket here, and this little wing nut bracket here. It does a very good job at actually uh, keeping this thing on. Just loosen it up, Turn this to where it's even and the ramp lifts right off the ramp is really really light maybe about 10 pounds total like i said i put some skateboard grip tape on it just so when it's a little bit wet or the tires are wet it'll grip a little bit and actually get up onto the ramp a little easier so as you would expect the ramp will go on to either end and it is just secured on here by this little bracket here so this ramp actually brings us to our first negative of this whole thing and that's how short this ramp actually is compared to how long it really needs to be. This angle that it sets at is probably about a 45 degree angle. So it's easier if you have the end of the ramp kind of up on maybe a bank or something. But if you can really see that, that's a pretty steep angle to get this bike up on here. So kind of the next step is to address these little pins right here that are held in by the cotter pins. You take these out and the bike tire actually sets down in this. As you can see up there, you have two clamps on either side. And once the front wheel drops in there, those actually tighten up and kind of hold the bike in there a little more steady. Now on my Supermoto, because of how skinny and uh, small diameter the tires are, 
I leave these in place and I actually let the rear tire rest in the middle of these and the front tire rest in between the pin and the farthest bracket away. Then I just strap it down from there. The problem with the Supermoto is the wheel actually sits too far down in there and actually gets lodged down in there and you, it's very hard to get the bike out. So once I get it up there, I actually just let the fork kind of rest against the top of the tailgate where the pad is. That way I can get all of my straps and everything in line. But I've found it's actually easier just to push the bike up on there than it is to try to ride it up onto it, um, standing beside of it. That's about how it will sit. Like I said, the Supermoto, the diameter of the wheel and tire sinks too far down into this. So on a dirt bike, it would be fine. When you're hauling a Supermoto, it's a little bit different. Now you can take the center pin out and let this back wheel kind of set in there a little bit easier but i found that there's no big change as far as stability with the tire up on top of that versus it's all in pretty much how you strap the bike down so next up i'm going to show you how to do that so if you don't have a canyon dancer which is a bar harness that goes over the grips and kind of hangs down i don't know where mine went i found these rider cargo brand uh soft ties that go pretty much tie into each other that way you have an anchor point for your actual tie down I found that for four dollars on Amazon, these right here work just as well as a Canyon Dancer. Well, maybe not just as well, but for ten times less the cost, they do pretty daggone good. So guys, this is actually my biggest pet peeve of this whole setup, is there's no real place to really mount your straps except for the center two holes here and there's two holes down there. Other than that, there's not many mounting points on this whole setup, so you have to kind of get creative with the way you do it. But typically, and I'm not responsible for the way you strap your bike, but I'll run one straight down to here one straight down to the other side and then I will loop one all the way over and attach it on the actual mounting points and it's actually pretty secure on there it does move a little bit like I said but not very very much at all that is the big downfall of this if they would give you some front and rear mounting points for the straps it would be so much better my straps are crazy crazy long because it's the ones I usually use my, on my side by side so I did have to kind of loop them back and forth to uh, get them out of the way. But one strap over, two straps in the front. And before I have actually ran a strap straight over top of the tire as well. But um, for this video, I'm not. But we can go for a ride and I will show you exactly uh, how this thing performs when it's on the road. There, guys so there you have it that is kind of the full um i guess loading of a bike onto the harbor freight uh, motorcycle carrier uh, it does have its pros it does have its cons so far i've used it a bunch of times and uh, i've never really had a problem out of it so if you like these reviews if you like the channel if you like supermotos if you like any kind of youtube content that has to do with anything on my channel why don't you smash that like button subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys on the next video